the head of an 8 week old human fetus the fetus's eyes nose and hands are also visible here the 8th week of pregnancy represents the end of the formative developmental stage and the embryo becomes a fetus it is human like in appearance with the head large in proportion to the body the genital organs develop into male or female at 7 weeks all major organ systems are formed by the 8th week but require growth By 8 weeks the fetus is about 3 to 4 cm long from crown to rump and weighs under 10 g. This is table salt. Salt crystals are built up from a cubic lattice of sodium and chloride ions. In the absence of impurities an exact cubic crystal form would be produced. In practice however this basic cube is usually disrupted by dislocations. This gives rise to crystals with a variety of shapes although they all retain the basic cubic symmetry. A dandelion flower head showing seeds still nestled inside the blossom. Compound eye of an insect. The units in a compound eye the armatidia each contain a cornea and photoreceptor cells and are capped by a cuticular biconvex lens. It is the cumulative effect of these lenses that produces the vision of a compound eye. While a compound eye is not very good at distinguishing details, it does enable the detection of tiny movements. Cellulose fibers in a cheap non-uniform paper towel. The large pores in the cellulose fiber matrix indicate the towel's small capacity for absorption. Eye lens fibers showing the regular arrangement of fibers. Lens cells lack a nuclei and the main constituent of the cells is the protein crystalline. Tightly packed layers of lens fibers as seen here are referred to as laminae. The transparency of the lens is thought to arise from the regular arrangement of the cells and fibers. The lens fibers are linked together via gap junctions as seen here and interdigitations of the cells. Pollen grains on an anther of a daisy flower. Pollen grains are reproductive structures produced by the male parts of flowering plants. These are eggs of the giant owl butterfly. This is what happens when a jellyfish stings you. Jellyfish have special cells along their tentacles called cnidocytes. Within these cells are harpoon-like structures full of venom called nematocysts. The nematocysts shoot out when triggered by touch and can penetrate human skin in less time than it takes you to blink. This is an aphid. Aphids are small bugs that feed by sucking sap from plants. They reproduce rapidly often producing live young without mating and may live in large colonies that cause extensive damage to crops. What you see here are sensory hairs on the antenna of an ant. Antennas are the chief sensory organs that ants use to smell, taste, touch and communicate with other ants. A used razor blade. The blade's edge is chipped and rough, and the surface is covered in shaving foam residue seen in yellow color and broken hairs. These are the spiny leaf traps from a Venus flytrap plant. If you look closely, there is an insect trapped in the leaf in the background. The leaf spines also seen on the edge of the foreground leaf interlock on the closed trap, preventing the insect from escaping. If you zoom in on its leaves, you will notice that the leaves have sensory hairs or trichomes in black and digestive glands in red. Venus flytraps are carnivorous plants that trap insects within their leaves. When an insect crawling along the leaf contacts two or more hairs within 20 seconds of each other, the two lobes of the leaf slam shut, trapping the insect between them. Enzymes are then excreted from the glands to dissolve the prey, and the plants absorb the resulting nutrients. The cut edge of a potato chip. Large empty cells can be seen here, which in the living plant are filled with starch grains. These air-filled cavities are responsible for the crunch of potato chips.
Leg hollers organ of a tick. Ticks are blood sucking mites and sense their warm blooded host animals through vibrations and scent. This species of Ixodes ricinus has developed a specific organ for smelling on its leg, the hollers organ. If a host draws near, they drop from grasses and bushes on their victims, search for a warm, thin skinned area, and drill their mouth parts into the host. The blood sucking process can last several days during which the tick takes up to 200 times in weight in blood. Lyme disease bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi in the midgut lumen of an infected tick. The spiral-shaped bacteria, the long worm-like objects are passed onto humans via tick bites and cause Lyme disease. Symptoms include skin lesions, neurological and cardiac abnormalities, and recurrent or chronic arthritis. Several species of tick have so far been found to harbor the bacteria. A PS2 connector on a mouse. This connector plugs into port on the computer. A cross section of an elastic cartilage from a pinna, external ear. Elastic cartilage maintains the semi-rigid flexible shape of the ear and contains fibers of the protein elastin. Cartilage is a firm and flexible connective tissue which is composed of chondrocyte cells embedded in holes seen here in black in an extracellular matrix in gray. The layers of skin top and bottom enclosing the cartilage are also seen here. The pinna channels sound waves into the internal ear. This is plaque removed from the carotid artery which is often a result of poor lifestyle choices. A spider. It may look like toilet roll, but these tubes are polar bear guard hairs, the coarse outer layer that protects the finer under fur from the elements. Although they look white, they are translucent and each air-filled hollow structure of the hair gives it its insulating properties. The hollow in the center of the hair contains air, which is not a good conductor of heat. This insulates the polar bear from the extreme cold of its arctic habitat. The air also helps to prevent hair matting, which helps the polar bear shake itself dry. The hair is also oily to repel water. A scribble made using a gel ink pen. Purkinje fibers running over heart muscle fibers. Purkinje fibers are modified cardiac muscle fibers which originate from the atrioventricular node and spread into the two ventricles. They transmit the electrical impulse from the atrioventricular node to the ventricles enabling their almost simultaneous contraction. The spread of excitation through the ventricles from the atrioventricular node is extremely rapid, moving at 1 to 4 meters per second. A detailed look inside the flower bud of a winter's bark tree. The flowers of Japanese hornwort. Japanese hornwort is a member of the carrot family. It is eaten raw in salads or as garnish and is used as flavoring in soups or cooked as greens. A common frog tadpole sewing its gills at the center. This is the external gill stage. The gills are feathery and present a large surface area for the uptake of oxygen. The head also shows an eye pit, dark spot in the upper left. Gonorrhea bacteria in pink infecting a cell. This gram-negative bacteria causes the sexually transmitted infection gonorrhea. Symptoms include a vaginal or urethral discharge and a burning sensation on urination. However, the majority of infected women develop no symptoms. Treatment is with antibiotics. A house cricket's ovipositor, which is a tubular organ through which a female insect deposits eggs. A spore capsule or sporangium of cord moss. 
The sporangium are spiraling stalks which curl up in dry conditions and unwind when they are damp. The small round structures are the spores, which are flung away from the plant as the fringe of the teeth called peristome around the mouth of the capsule opens. They may be a mystery to the ladies but they're very familiar to gentlemen. They are called urinal cakes and are commonly seen at the bottom of urinals. Their purpose is to control bacteria and reduce smell. The solid cake sublimes, meaning it converts to gas without going through the liquid state. They are made of paradichlorobenzene, a chemical that does deodorize but comes with baggage. It is a recognized animal carcinogen and causes concern because it can be found in the blood of most people. This is a wafer, which is a piece of silicone or other semiconductor material designed in the form of a very thin disc. Wafers are used to create electronic integrated circuits and silicon-based photovoltaic cells. Crystals of Sweet in Low Artificial Sweetener This sweetener uses a mixture of aspartame and asulfame K to mimic the taste of sugar. Aspartame is a source of phenylalanine, so products must carry a warning as people with disease phenylketonuria are unable to metabolize this amino acid. A silver fish Pollen grains in color red on the upper part of the female part of a geranium flower. The female part of a flower is named the pistil, and the upper part can be one or several stigmas. A geranium pistil has five free stigmas, which have opened up here to expose their pollinating surfaces colored yellow. A pollen grain contains the male genetic material and grows a tube down the pistil's central stalk to fertilize the female genetic material in the ovary at the base of the pistil. This forms a seed for a new plant. MERS virus particles Seen here are the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome related coronavirus particles in yellow on infected culture cells in blue. Formerly known as novel coronavirus, MERS was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Most people infected with MERS develop severe acute respiratory illness with symptoms of fever, cough and shortness of breath. A maggot A cross section through a bean of a coffee plant showing the internal structure. The 1 micron projections on the adhesive patches of a leaping gall maze larva. What is fascinating about this larva is that it can jump even though it doesn't have any legs. Attaching its head to its tail to form a ring, this larva squeezes some internal fluids into its tail section, swelling it and raising the pressure like an inner tube. When the adhesive bond between the head and the tail can no longer hold, the tension is sprung, launching the worm into a high tumbling flight that will carry it 20 to 30 body lengths away in a tenth of a second at speeds comparable to a jumping insect with actual legs. Here is the larva in action. <laughs> 